ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Adolescence. Welcome back to another video. I hope this video finds you well. Thank you so much for joining me today. And in today's episode, I have a fragrance by Tsuga Parfum. The perfumer for this is James Barry. And the fragrance that we're going to be taking a look at today is a brand new 2021 release. It's called Pop. You can tell by the graphic on the bottle what you can kind of expect from the smell of this one. So I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this fragrance. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin with my fragrance review of Pop by Tsuga Parfum, and I tell you all about this fragrance, what kind of vibe I get from it, the note breakdown, comparison, so on and so forth, performance, I do want to mention that if you are a fan of fragrance-related content, if you like fragrance reviews just like this on designer, indie, niche brands, so on and so forth, and you also like giveaways, top 10 videos, unboxings, special guests, and more, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. It would mean so much to me, and also please give this video a thumbs thumbs up, it would really go a long way in terms of the YouTube algorithm. So the perfumer for this one is James Barry. I've actually reviewed a couple of his other fragrances. I've done a review on Fiona. There's also one called Wine and Chocolate, which is an awesome fragrance. And so I'm going to leave a link to those videos down below if you are interested in seeing my in-depth thoughts on those fragrances. You know, he is an independent perfumer. Everything is made by hand. And uh, obviously there's been an upgrade to the presentation, even though I kind of like the look and feel of the older, rounder bottles. I do like that now there's uniformity among all of the fragrances. And I think that that's pretty cool. And from the artwork, there's just a high level of personalization. And you can tell that the perfumer slash creative director slash owner of the brand, James Barry, really puts his heart and soul into the fragrances. And so, of course, with a name like Pop, we're kind of expecting this to smell like Pop. I live in New Jersey, we call it soda here, but it's actually supposed to smell like root beer. So when you take a look at the note breakdown, it has like beer slash ale notes, sweet notes, woodsy notes, tobacco notes, rum, very complex note breakdown. So I'm excited to give you my thoughts on the smell. Let's start things off with the presentation. So right in the opening of this fragrance, you are going to get this root beer accord, which is super strong, really decadent, um, actually smells awesome, very nostalgic. I don't know if you've ever been to like a Johnny Rockets and you get a root beer float. I think, I think that's where they sell the root beer floats that I'm thinking of because I used to go there all the time down in Atlantic City uh, with friends and family. And it kind of reminds me of that, even though I haven't consumed root beer in a very long time. But there is this air of nostalgia about this fragrance that I really, really appreciate. But it's interesting because there's also a tone of sophistication residing in the base where, you know, even though that root beer accord might make one think, oh, is it going to come across gimmicky? It totally doesn't. It's not a novelty scent in the sense that it's something just to smell every now and they, now and again, just to, you know, get this whimsical feeling. That's not what this is. It's ultra wearable. Um, I think it's quite seductive. It's a very sophisticated scent. And in the opening, it has those spicy, boozy, um, slightly sweet notes that really conjure up that sort of um, root beer vibe. But when you give it a chance to dry down, there's something really elegant coming through in this fragrance. And so you have that tobacco in here. And I think on account of those sweet notes, it kind of reminds me of like a pipe, like cherry flavored tobacco. And so that's really interesting. And then with the woodsy notes, I'm really having a hard time assessing what's used in here, whether it be sandalwood, maybe even a touch of agarwood. I know that James Barry, the perfumer, has access to a lot of, you know, really expensive raw materials. He's used a lot of really expensive raw materials and fragrances like Fiona and I'm sure many others. And so here we have the quality equivalent to those fragrances while embodying a completely different olfactory profile. And so this is one that I think is going to appeal to a lot of people just because of how accessible the formula is. However, it it is on the darker side. And so it's not this bright, upbeat, freshy, versatile gym type of a scent. 
Mm -mm. That's not what you're going to get here. And so if you're used to wearing fragrances like Dior Sauvage and Bleu de Chanel, this is going to be a deviation from those types of fragrances. However, I think if you're a fan of fragrances like Amber Acalaria by Electimus, if you're a fan of fragrances like Creation E by Roja Parfum, and there's also a fragrance, I think it might be called Boys, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's by Killian Paris, and it's in one of those spherical types of bottles. If you're a fan of those fragrances that kind of give off like this tobacco, rum, boozy, cherry, sweet, woodsy, and spicy sort of a vibe, this is awesome. This is a really, really interesting fragrance. Now, I do personally feel like this is a dressed up formal occasion kind of a fragrance. Even though you think of root beer, you think of a, a beverage that would be consumed casually, I think the aroma and when it's applied on skin and clothing, and I probably wouldn't spray this on clothing because of how dark the juice is, but I think in terms of you wearing this fragrance, I can see this one being really appropriate for a formal scenario as opposed to a casual scenario. And I also do personally feel as though this is more suited for the colder weather. And so I'll probably save this for the autumn. I think this would be a fantastic fragrance for the autumn. And if I do a top 10 or top 20, which I typically do, I can certainly see this one being included in that list because I just think it's a solid fragrance, ultra long lasting, which is a characteristic of all Tsuga fragrances from what I remember because James Barry did graciously gift me um, a sample set of the brand and I tried them all and even on the test trip like weeks later I was still picking them up and smelling them and so they do last a very long time at least on a test trip so in any case I enjoyed this fragrance I hope you have a chance to sample it I'm gonna leave links down below to where you can experience this fragrance and all of the other fragrances from Tsuga Parfum and with that being said, let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, despite the fact that I made a couple of comparisons with fragrances like Boys by Killian Paris, Enigma by Roja Parfum, even Amber Acalaria by Electimus, I think at the end of the day, this is a unique fragrance. And of course, there's also an Escada fragrance called Magnetism for Men, which is now discontinued. That was also said to have a bit of like a root beer, grape soda type of a vibe. And I own that fragrance and it actually does. But I think this one is ultra powerful. I think it's a very sophisticated fragrance as you give it a chance to dry down. It is not a novelty scent in any way, even though the artwork might convey a bit more of a casual atmosphere. I think the scent itself is actually very well done. I think it's very complex and you can smell the quality of ingredients being used here. And I know that in his uh, arsenal, if you will, the perfumer James Barry does have access to a lot of really high quality ingredients. And so longevity on this one, 12 plus hours. You don't want to mess around with this one, given the concentration and the quality of ingredients and the nature of the perfume itself. The fact that it does contain a lot of base heavy ingredients, you can really expect this one to last a very long time. Projection beyond an arm's length for three to four hours. It did start to sit a little bit closer to the skin at that like eight hour mark, but the performance is monstrous on this one, and that's the case also with Wine and Chocolate as well as Fiona, which I actually have over here to the side. So I do have a couple of his offerings and they're all really, really good from what I've smelled. In terms of the versatility, like I said, save this one for the colder weather. I think it would work great in the autumn and winter. I think it's completely unisex, and I also believe that this one will um, cater to somebody who's a little bit younger as well as somebody who's a little bit older. And so I find it pretty versatile in that regard because it's a scent that is so nostalgic and you know that root beer vibe will appeal to somebody who's a little bit younger, but as it dries down, that spicy, woodsy, tobacco thing is really masculine. Uh, not masculine in the sense that, you know, it's not feminine, but it's really like mature and it's something that I can see somebody who's a little bit older really appreciating as well. In terms of the presentation, I do like the original artwork and I like that personalized touch and how he really covers all aspects of the presentation and he does it himself. My final verdict on this fragrance is if you are looking for a boozy, root beer, rum, tobacco, slightly spicy and sweet type of a fragrance, Check out Pop by Tsuga Parfum, probably the most realistic root beer fragrance that I put my nose on. And I'm very stoked that I have the pleasure of adding this one to my collection. So 
There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me today. That was my fragrance review of Pop by Tsuga Parfum. If you own or have tried this fragrance, please let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Also, if you are new to this channel and you took something of value from this video, just anything, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. And of course, if you can give this video a thumbs up, it would really mean a lot to me as well. Thanks again for watching. Love you all. We'll see you next time. Bye.